Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Cosmetology Exam Review with the Intentional Classroom. So this is Teresa, the founder of the Intentional Classroom and your host for all of these amazing review videos. As always, if you like what you see, um, please subscribe, please share with everyone you know. My goal is always to give you resources that I think will either help you with your state board, help you as a teacher, or really just help you in anything related to cosmetology. So um, take a minute, subscribe, like, comment, do all of the things so that we can keep moving forward and we can communicate and we can get through this wonderful world of beauty spawn wellness together. So Today, I am going to cover the science of pin curls. This was by request, um, so that is why I chose this, but I also think it's one of those things that you do have to know for your state exam. And while so many of us can like bang out an amazing pin curl, we don't necessarily understand the science behind it, the angles, the parts of the curl, and that's what shows up on a test. So you might be able to do a killer updo and you know be able to do some really, really great curls, but that doesn't mean you understand the science behind it. And you will need to know that for your state exam. So with all of that, let's get going, okay? So what is a pin curl? Pin curl. A pin curl is a free formed curl that we pin at the base. So basically we can use them in a couple different ways. We can use them to actually create a roller set without the roller, or we can use them as actual um, design elements in an up to. So if you look at the picture to the left, these pin curls were used as a, as a design element and the one to the right, these were more used as a set, okay? As a, like a roller set without the roller, okay? Why would we choose to use a roller instead of a pin curl? Well, a roller has a stronger curl pattern because it has that form underneath it. The pin curl will typically be a little bit softer. So I fully advise you that anytime you do an updo, you start with a pin curl set to put some movement into the hair before you really start moving forward pinning things, okay? So today we talk about these pin curls and understanding the parts and pieces of each of them. That means we start with the parts of a curl. There's three parts of a curl, the base, the circle, and the stem, okay? So the base is the hair that is actually attached to the scalp, okay? So it's this part, this part where we pick up the hair and it's the hair that is actually attached to the scalp. The stem is the actual hair between the base and the first curve of the circle, okay? So the circle is, is obvious, it's the circle, right? It is the actual curl, but the stem is that space between the base and the circle. And then of course, like I just said, the circle is the actual circle, it's the actual curl, okay? So we've got your base, your stem, and your circle. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Let's break down base, okay? Your base can be created by using a variety of shapes, and these shapes give you different end results in your, in your final style, okay? So these are some of the more common ones that we see, and these are the ones that are very likely to appear on your state exam. So please, please, please remember that this is likely to show up on your exam. First, we have a rectangle base. It's exactly what it looks like. When you section out the piece of hair, it's a rectangle, just like if you were doing a perm or a roller set, same thing. We use a rectangle base for the side and front because it creates a smooth upswept, upswept effect. Let me be clear. That is exactly what your state board will probably say is which base would you use for a smooth upswept effect? It's rectangle. <coughs> the next base that we see is a triangle base. We tend to use this at the front hairline because it's going to prevent splits at the hairline. We don't want those splits there, right? We don't want those indentation marks there because it gets much, much harder to tease back out later. So the triangle base, we tend to use at the front hairline. So what might your state ask? Well, they might say something like, which of the bases would you use at the, prevent, at the front hairline to prevent splits? It's a triangle base, okay? Then the other two that we tend to see are the arc base and the square. The arc can also be called the half moon or the C-shaped, because if you look at it, that really is all the same shape. We use that typically at the nape or the hairline to give some direction to the hair. So I want you to picture the nape and, you know, you have all these different curves and angles right at the perimeter of your hairline there. And if we use an arc, it's going to be a little bit smoother looking. It's going to kind of move with the flow of the hair rather than putting lines in it that you don't need. The square can be used anywhere, but what we typically do use square for is like a cascade curl or stand-up pin curl. It can be used anywhere. It's going to help you create low volume curls. 
The first two, rectangle and triangle, are probably the most commonly seen on your state exams, but you should definitely flashcard these and really understand where we would use which and those key terms. So if you watch this video a couple times, those key things, I pulled these directly from a Milady's textbook. We all know while the states have to technically use Milady's end pivot point, we do know that really they kind of gravitate towards Milady. So I pulled this directly from that text. So if you make a flashcard with these descriptions, you should be okay. All right. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the stem. Okay. So the stem determines the mobility. Remember, the, the stem is the space between the base, the hair attached to the scalp, and that first circle. There's three stems that we tend to see. First is a no stem. All right. No stem means that we wrap that curl really tight all the way up into the scalp. Okay. That's going to give you a very tight, firm curl. So what might your test question look like? They may say, which stem would you use to provide the tightest, firm curl? Or which stem would you use to place directly on the base? That's your no stem mobility, okay? Then you have half stem. This gives you medium movement. The curl pos is positioned half off the base. So remember, to, to position something half off the base, we are holding it straight up 90 degrees and there's going to have a little bit less tension. Full stem mobility gives you maximum mobility. And this is typically the one that you see on a state exam. And it will say something like, which stem would you use in a pin curl to give you maximum mobility? And it's full stem. This is an off base placement. So that means we are actually holding the hair 45 degrees behind the base when we wrap it. And that's going to give you that, that full stem, which means it's going to move the most. It's going to bounce the most because it is the furthest away from the scalp. Now let's dive into the circle a little bit. <clears throat> we typically see two different types of circles. We have an open centered circle or a closed centered circle. An open, open centered circle gives you a very consistent curl because basically what you're doing is everything's being wrapped the same size over and over and over again. And if you were to pick up the curl and look through it, there'd be a hole in the center, like a donut, okay? Who doesn't love a donut? The closed centered curl is the opposite. This is where it gets smaller towards the end because I want you to picture this. If you are wrapping from the ends towards the scalp and you're doing a closed centered curl, you're gonna start with an itty bitty circle and you're going to get it, it's gonna get bigger and bigger like a Nautilus, bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What's going to happen is the curls at the end are gonna be kinkier because they were wrapped tighter and the curls towards the scalp will be a little bit looser. So a closed centered curl is going to create waves that get smaller towards the end. So these are the two types of circles that you need to know for your exam. Okay, what about pin curl placement? So these are some things that you can do with pin curls, and I don't think everybody quite recognize it, recognizes it, but it's also one of these things that you learn in hair school, and then you pass the test, and then you never think about it again. So there's three terms that you need to know when it comes to pin curl placement. First is a ridge curl. A ridge curl is a row of pin curls that are placed behind a finger wave. So if you look at the picture there, you'll see finger wave, finger wave, finger wave, and then a row of pin curls. That comes right behind that ridge of the finger wave. So the reason we do that is because you can't finger wave onto the ear and the neck. So it basically finishes up the style when you've moved past the place to be able to finger wave. That's your ridge curl waves, you can create finger waves with pin curls. So if you do two different rows of pin curls wrapped in opposite directions, it will create a finger wave type effect. Okay. So to do that, you would do one row of pin curls wrapping it towards the face. And then the next row you'd wrap away from the face and you go back and forth and back and forth. And what that's going to do is create waves for you with the pin curls. Finally, you have something called skip wave curls. Now, what this is, is two rows of ridge curls. So how that works is you create a finger wave and you have the ridge of the finger wave. Then you have a row of pin curls. Then you do another finger wave behind that next ridge. You do another row of pin curls. Okay. So those are skip waves and it's two rows of ridge curls. So like I said earlier, this is one of those things that you do need to learn because it always shows up on a state exam and it kind of stumps people because you're like, I've never done that. I don't even, and it's real. Like you really aren't probably going to do this in life, but you got to know it for your test. Okay. Some final information you need to know for the state board. First is the term ribboning. Okay. So ribboning is just like when you're wrapping Christmas presents and you take the scissor and a ribbon and you put that 
that ribbon between your thumb and your shear or your scissor and you pull it and it creates the curl for you, right? But what ribboning does in pin curls is it smooths all of that cuticle so that it's all in the same direction, which means you're going to get a smoother curl. So basically what we do is we take the back of the comb and our thumb and we put the hair between them and we pull, okay? And what you're doing is you're smoothing all of the cuticle layer down. So that's really simple, but that's ribboning for you. And then finally, you need to know something called a cascade curl or a stand-up pin curl. So a cascade curl is exactly what you see in this picture. It's basically a barrel curl. It's basically like a roller set. We're not using it for design, we're using it to create volume and curl. So we use cascade curls or stand-up pin curls <clears throat> when we are creating a roller set that we will then comb out and use the curls in a different way, okay? That's your cascade or your stand-up pin curl. All right, so the reality is, guys, is we create curls in a variety of ways. We use rollers, pin curls, curling irons, hot rollers, perms, but they all cover these fundamentals. There is another video that I have on my page on base placement. So while I could have included it here, I thought, okay, well, let's let's do some smaller videos, shorter videos. But if you need to understand base placement better, please go find that video and watch it because it goes with the world of curls. But this was really just kind of that dissection of pin curls. I hope it helps you review the materials. This is the stuff that shows up on your state exam that you think I'm never gonna use it. And you're probably right. But you do need to know it for that test. So hopefully this helps you prepare for for that. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys liked this again, please subscribe, please share with your classmates, your students, whomever you think it's going to help. Um, the more we share, the more we comment, the more we engage, the more people we reach and the more people we can help. So I appreciate your help with this. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week with another review concept. Have an amazing day.